works very well. It's all underground. It's shops and stuff on the ground. And uh, then Joni loves romance. And um, this is Joni just absolutely spaced out in front of the room. It's just a whole room with really 18 of these huge paintings, but done in honor of Marie de Medici, who was really on the quest of the way of that. But for her, it was all downhill after that. And if you like rooms, you can really, really open this on. <coughs> we stayed in an inexpensive little hotel on the left bank, and uh, there was a little bistro outside our room, which was very quiet and nice. And then we discovered uh, that there was a jazz festival going on in Paris. And the bistro woke up, and uh, the sun goes down in Paris, wakes up and sings, as the song says. And man, it was a place. They were moving and hollering and playing music down in the morning. And also out in the park playing brass instruments. But there were little bits of brass, uh, all of, uh, jazz music going on on street corners everywhere around. Um, we found some tuba wine in Paris at the local grocery store. And uh, then went over to the Orangerie, which is in the Tuileries Gardens. It's uh, uh, one of the great museums. They Monet water lilies from upstairs, but downstairs they had this great water stuff. I'd never heard of this guy. That's why I put the whole title down there. I couldn't remember his name. E.D.A. Guignon. And uh, then we went over to the Clooney Museum. Uh, we have a copy of this tapestry in our house. Uh, it came from Chief Fox. <laughs> but it's people harvesting and trumping on grapes. It's a nice tapestry in our bag. But that's the original of the wonderful Clooney Museum. Uh, this I call my first Picasso. Uh, it's a, uh, a young boy with a crayfish, and you don't have to look too closely to see that everything about him is revealed, and I mean everything. And when I was about 10, uh, my mother took me to a Picasso show, and I saw this thing, and I, it just, uh, I was amazed. I didn't know people painted like that. But there he is. It's in the Picasso Museum. Rental bikes in Paris, there are a lot of rental bike facilities in Europe, and everybody's biking. Uh, outside of the Musée Pompidou, which has this wonderful kind of tubular staircase on the outside, uh, I love this picture. This is from up on the top of the Pompidou Museum, looking across the roofs of Paris to uh, the watch. And uh, <clears throat> the ladies were having a heyday. Uh, I call this the uh, gender benders. The, uh, the exhibit was called L, meaning uh, they, they, and it was all sorts of female painters work inside. A wonderful exhibit. But if you notice, they've taken all the names of uh, dead white males and turned them into feminine names. So there's uh, Miss Van der Rohe, there's uh, Francine Picard, there's Annie Warhol. It goes on and on. And as a male in that exhibit, I felt quite threatened. <laughs> so it was a lot of fun. And uh, Joan Mitchell, I really like this abstract. It's a Joan Mitchell. And then we went out to Charles de Gaulle, Pirate of Abbey, and we got to put Italy the next year. So we were close to all time. I took you down the water pretty fast, but you have to be able to pull it in. And finally, we decided to tackle Tuscany. We trained ahead of time, we rode on our bike paths but for longer distances, and we tried to find hills in Farmington and elsewhere. Because every time we mentioned that we were going to Tuscany, people would say, what? I have a bicycle in Tuscany. And we said, oh, sure. And this trip was five actual days of biking with about two in Florence at the beginning and two in Florence at the end. So, yeah, we started in Florence and went due south all the way down to Siena. Yeah. And once again, uh, staying a couple of nights in each of the little towns that we landed in. I sat next to a, a nice young man who was going on a hiking trip, and his group was going directly to Rada, and I told him that we were gonna go through Rada, and he said, Rada on bicycle? Rada is straight up. 
So uh, I think you're getting the idea that we thought we were so terrific, but these were big hills. And since this trip, I've talked about biking in Tuscany with uh, other friends, and it's not the only tour you have to take. You can go from Florence and then go down to the shore and ride along the coast so that you're not going up and down. <coughs> So we did start in uh, Florence, Firenze, and Charlie, yes, this is the bike shop, which was a couple blocks away from us. So the first day we were there, we uh, checked out the store, and the bike shop that is, and uh, got fitted for our bikes. And on the day that we started our trip, the following day, see that? We're ready for anything. That's just um, one of the trips. This is the, the first day, yes. Does it look a little cloudy? We had a lot of rain. I don't know if Charlie pointed out that besides having lots of rain, it really doesn't matter. First of all, the helmet keeps your head dry. And if you've got a good Gore-Tex rain jacket, it's OK. And we, at no time did we feel we were skidding because of the rain. It's perfectly safe and stable. And it keeps you cool. So we climbed, and when we left Florence on that second day, we were headed toward Rada, and straight uphill, and then maybe downhill. It's a lot of fun to go down after you've climbed a hill. You just uh, put it in neutral and head on down. And these were not dedicated bicycle paths. We were never on any bicycle paths on this Tuscany trip. We were on the open road. But I have to say, and Charlie will agree with me, that the, for the most part, the Italian uh, drivers are very respectful of bicyclists because it's part of their culture. And even up in the hills, they seem to be cognizant of the fact that there might be bikers along the way. Only once did we have a very frightening experience. We were going straight up and a and approaching a hairpin turn, you all know what that is, and a truck came, I guess, speeding down on the turn. He crossed over to our lane and he practically pushed us off into the bushes. We were scared out of our wits. That was the single experience like that in all of our bike trips where it was dangerous driving. And I just automatically, the way I do here, it's a youngster driving and he doesn't have the uh, maturity to understand that there could be people in danger because of his driving. There's Charlie. And so this is what's known as Rada in Chianti. And of course the entire trip was more or less dedicated to uh, bicycling through wine country, or almost all of the time. Surrounding the little town, which is way, way up, is a beautiful wall with outlooks. And you look down on the various vineyards from uh, different approaches. It has very nice streets. And I want to say, uh, I didn't exactly describe our trip to Rada on the first day. As I, as I did point out, it's straight uphill. And it was straight uphill and it was pouring rain. <laughs> but this very lovely young clerk in the hotel who was also a, a studying how to be in the hotel business, was absolutely charming and helpful. But she took us around the corner to where we locked up our bikes. And then we had a great dinner and a good rest and a hot shower. It was a lovely little hotel. This is one of the little, tiny little towns we went through. Also uh, in the midst of vineyards. And this is a famous uh, Fontaratoli uh, wine name, uh, a type of Chianti. And we have discovered, and I've heard other people remark about this lately, that when you and this is true in California, too. When you go through wine-tasting country, 
It used to be 